Thunderstorms continue to pound parts of southeastern Kentucky. I'm tracking the severe weather threat just ahead. A southern Kentucky man answering to a murder charge today after police say he killed his pregnant girlfriend. Investigators have made two more arrests in connection with the murder of a Mercer County High School student. We'll have the latest on the case coming up. WKYT News starts now with First Alert Weather. Good afternoon, Sam Dick and Amber Philpott reporting. Storms with large hail and heavy rain moved across the state earlier today. We are getting some reports of flooding across southeastern Kentucky. Highway 11 in Owsley County is closed because of some high water. With many of the storms training over the same area, there is a high flood threat. We have called a WKYT First Alert Severe Weather Day to keep you informed. We want to check in now with Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey. That severe weather day has been ongoing since yesterday, and we are uh, left now with thunderstorms into southeastern Kentucky with a severe thunderstorm watch that will go until 10 o'clock this evening for all the counties that are shaded in the yellow. That does include Hazard and the Pikeville area. This will never see the expiration time of 10 o'clock. It's on the back end. A lot of those thunderstorms are winding down, at least in terms of the true severe impact. Much more concerned about flooding. Flash flood watch continues this evening for southeastern Kentucky as well. Those storms earlier had a lot of large hail with them. Haven't had any reports of wind damage, but even the hail threat now beginning to go by the wayside. Heavy rains, though, putting it down across parts of southeastern Kentucky. Flash flood warnings extend from the West Virginia border there into Martin and Pike counties. Back to the southwest through London and just to the west or east, I should say, of the Somerset area. Back to your Defender Radar Network and those showers and thunderstorms continuing to put down a lot of rain here from southeastern Kentucky all the way into sections of Cumberland, right on top of the Harlan and Letcher County line toward Whitesburg. Small hail producing thunderstorm there, really keeping an eye out on parts of Breathitt County, Boonville, and Owsley County, Salyersville, McGoffin County, where you've had some flooding already today. You had flooding yesterday. Rains to the north and west of that beginning to lighten up a little bit. Back edge kind of capping itself right on top of the bluegrass area. And as we get rid of that rain, overall, it's a better look and feel coming in for the day tomorrow. But between now and then, the last little band of some rain is right on top of the bluegrass region. Guys, we'll focus on southeastern Kentucky still, where you've got some creeks and streams that are going to run high for the next several hours. All right, Chris, thank you. Two more teenagers are now charged in the murder of a central Kentucky teen. 18 year olds Zachary Lay and Megan Sims were arrested this weekend in connection to the death of 17 year old Tristan Cole. He was found shot to death last month. Our Hillary Fortin is in Harrodsburg with more on the charges the pair face in our top story at 4 30. Detectives with Kentucky State Police say the juvenile charged with the murder of Mercer County High School junior Tristan Cole had some help getting rid of the murder weapon. And detectives say on Friday, they had enough evidence to link two of Cole's classmates to the crime. We're grieving for the loss of Tristan, but I know that those families are going to be grieving as well. And for such young people to lose the re pretty much the rest of their life. 18 year olds Zachary Lay and Megan Sims joining a juvenile previously charged in the shooting death of the 17 year old. Detectives say all involved are students at Mercer County High School. Where the victim was a junior. Lay and Sims arrested this weekend on charges of tampering with physical evidence after investigators say they helped the juvenile charged with robbery and murder sell the gun he used to shoot Cole. Police say Lay also helped the accused murderer hide the weapon. While Sims is bonded out of jail, Lay remains in custody and was arraigned through video today in Mercer County District Court. The judge entering a plea of not guilty on his behalf, keeping his bond set at $10,000 cash. Cole's family members say while they are glad to see progress in the investigation, they know the coming months will be difficult while dealing with the loss as well as going through the court proceedings. It's going to be hard. It's right now with everything that's going on, it's hard to grieve for him. There's just no peace. And there won't be peace until the ones that are guilty are punished for what they've done. Leia is scheduled in court next Tuesday afternoon for a preliminary hearing. In Harrodsburg, Hillary Thornton, WKYT. As of this afternoon, the clerk's office had not received bond paperwork for Sims, so they are not sure of when she will be in court. 
A Clay County man answered to charges today after police say he shot his pregnant girlfriend. That woman later died, and police say the suspect, Samuel Cornett, will face murder and fetal homicide charges. WKYT's Phil Pendleton talked to the suspect's aunt, who was also a victim of a violent rampage. 52 year old Samuel Cornett is being held here in the Clay County Jail on a $750,000 cash only bond after a very violent night that police and relatives say began Friday night and did not end until very early Saturday morning. Now, relatives say Cornette and his girlfriend, 35-year-old Alicia Ty, had been arguing because Ty had told him that she wanted to leave him. She actually sought refuge from that fight at Cornette's aunt's home near the home the couple shared on Skull Branch Road. Amanda Ross says Cornette broke in and hit her and several others and then back to the back bedroom where he found Ty. I had to see her laying there bleeding. <laughs> and <laughs> nobody understands what we're going to do with either. Now, Ty was taken to UK hospital. She died yesterday morning. Right now, Cornette is charged with murder, domestic violence, five counts of wanton endangerment, assault, and burglary first. Now, all of this happened in the presence of several children. We'll tell you more about that coming up at 5 30. But for now, Clay County, Phil Pendleton, WKYT. Cornette said he did not want to talk to us about the charges from jail. Lexington EMS crews say the number of times they're responding to drug overdose calls has more than doubled in the past few years. And with that increase also comes an increase in the cost of naloxone, the drug that can reverse the effects of an opiate overdose. Naloxone was $4 a dose back in 2010. Last year, it was $38 a dose. But mainly, this is the largest increase, and you know, we just can't keep up with it. We still have to administer it. We're still going to give it. We don't have a choice. We're not going to stop. Amber's at the live desk now with our investigative reporter Miranda Combs with more on this story that she's working on for tonight at 6. Amber? Sam, thank you. Chief Wood there in your interview called this a budget killer, and this is a huge obstacle for them. It is, Amber, and it's not that they're never going to have this on their buggies. They always will have it, but the problem is, is they've even had to go back to the city council and ask for more money in their budget just for this. They, they paid $4,000 a month lately for this naloxone, which is, the brand name is Narcan, which a lot of people know. Yeah. Absolutely, mm -hmm. and they have seen a huge increase in the calls that they're having because of overdoses. We were able to go on a ride-along with EC9, which is actually the fire station over by Fayette Mall, and they said on average they go seven overdose calls a day, mm. which was shocking to me. So you put that that increase along with the cost of the naloxone, and you've got some big issues. And you're going to look at some of the reasons behind the increase, right? There are a lot of factors. We talked to a UK professor, and he said a lot of it's supply and demand. Years ago, they had 11 different companies that were making mm -hmm. this naloxone. Now it's down, or in 2010, there were only two. So you're seeing a lot of that backlog come in now. But he talks in detail about what they're trying to do. And it's an interesting take and an interesting story I'm excited to share it with you. It certainly is a battle for sure. Miranda, sure. thank you, Sam. Amber, Miranda, thank you. Some frightening moments for a Lexington firefighter while battling a fire at a Lexington home this afternoon. Firefighters say that no one was inside the home on Briar Hill Road when it caught fire shortly after one. A neighbor called in the fire and seeing flames shooting from the home. While crews were making sure that no one was inside the home, one of the firefighters fell down some steps from the second floor. Now, luckily, the firefighter was not injured and was able to continue helping put out the fire. He is fine. It just uh, kind of rattled his cage a little bit. Uh, you know, when you, it's dark and disorienting, and then when you suddenly start falling and you don't know where you're at or what's going on, you know, it, it kind of rattled your cage a little bit. Firefighters say the home will likely be a total loss. The cause of the fire remains under investigation. It is Derby Week, and there are many, many events off the track leading up to the run for the Roses on Saturday. On the track, Nyquist is looking good. The Kentucky bred three year old Colt is undefeated. He spent a few weeks at Keeneland before making the trip to Churchill Downs over the weekend. Nyquist is expected to head into the Kentucky Derby as the Derby favorite. One of the greatest living racehorses is the focus of a new exhibit at a Louisville museum. The Kentucky Derby Museum opened the American Pharaoh exhibit yesterday at Churchill Downs. It's filled with trophies from the Triple Crown winning horse's career and includes everything from a wall covered in newspaper clippings to an outfit jockey Victor Espinosa wore on Dancing with the Stars. His owner and trainer say the museum's film honoring the horse called The Greatest Race was emotional to watch. 
they've done a tremendous job of uh, how to celebrate such a wonderful horse that uh, really helped put racing back on the, on the map again. American Pharaoh was the first horse to win the Triple Crown in 37 years. The Dixie Chicks are coming to Kentucky. And that band is adding more concerts to their U.S. tour that starts this summer. The new stops include Louisville. The Grammy winning country group starts the tour on June 1st in Cincinnati. Tickets for the new dates will go on sale May 7th. President Obama and the First Lady's oldest daughter is embracing a popular trend among high school students. More on her gap year coming up. WKYT first alert severe weather day rolling on across central and eastern Kentucky where we have been watching the southeastern corner of the state for large hail producing thunderstorms and also flash flooding. Nine live sky cams from across the area. Farther west, we haven't had very much rain at all. Frankfort, Louisville down to E-Town. Get into parts of central Kentucky, though, from the Lexington area down to Corbin and especially southeastern Kentucky. Boy, oh boy, skies have been lighting up with showers and thunderstorms coming at us again today in waves like we have seen for the past, well, the majority of the past week. Good news, though, southeastern Kentucky, a lot of this is beginning to wind down. Bad news, you've got a saturated ground. You've had some flooding over the past few days, and you've got additional flash flood warnings that go from Pulaski County through London, Laurel County, all the way to the Big Sandy Valley and into southern parts of West Virginia. The strongest thunderstorms have now exited southeastern Kentucky into parts of Virginia and northeastern Tennessee. What we're left with, though, heavier rains that will continue to add to at least some local high water issues. Every stop we're looking at here on your Defender Radar Network picking up on some rounds of heavy rain. But I'll tell you, in the past hour, this stuff has decreased tremendously. We've had some flooding reports out of Salyersville, over into Booneville, Owsley County. A little farther to the north, it's a general uh, brand of some lighter rains that are falling from parts of Mount Sterling and Owingsville back into the Lexington Metro, where now it's just a sprinkle left over. Northwest side of town, uh, we were getting in on just a little bit of light rain. Southeastern side of town, where we are, it was a soaker of an afternoon. Still, any one fair game southeast of the Bluegrass Parkway for an isolated shower this evening. Those heavy rains will continue to focus on southeastern Kentucky, where we have a little wave of low pressure developing right on top of the Knoxville, Tennessee area. Almost a, kind of looking like a wintertime setup. You get one of those storms to work its way from the deep south up the slopes of the Appalachian Mountains. What does that mean for eastern Kentucky? This isn't for everyone here. You've had some large hail. Flooding, though, is the main threat in this type of a setup. As we go through the next few days, tomorrow it's an isolated shower of thunderstorms. Storms are likely on Wednesday, and it's a cool day. Could even see a little small hill. Thursday, gusty showers, and the overall forecast is for colder weather coming into town. How much colder are we talking about? Let's check in with the hour by hour forecast. 11 this evening, southeastern Kentucky still got some rains. That's why that flash flood threat will continue right on through the latter part of the evening into far southeastern Kentucky. By tomorrow morning now, it's a partly cloudy sky. Tomorrow's never going to be just a deep blue sky out there. You're going to have to fight some clouds, maybe uh, see a little spotty shower, thunderstorm going up, temperatures that will be into the 60s for highs. We go through tomorrow night. And into the day on Wednesday. Now, here comes the push of chilly air. Showers, thunderstorms. Ahead of this, we may spike it into the 60s and then look at 5 o'clock Wednesday. Readings are into the upper 50s into many areas. There could be some small hill with some of those showers, even without thunder and lightning. How about Thursday morning? We're down into the 30s when we wake up Thursday morning with partly cloudy skies. Thursday afternoon temperatures may struggle to get to 60 degrees. All right, Oaks Day, Derby Day, you got to do us a little better than that. 68, 74 on Kentucky Derby Saturday. Both days right now are looking dry. That is good news. And then it's game on from there toward the mid and upper 70s again, Sunday and Monday. That shot you had earlier of the hail coming down, yeah. I mean, it was just flat making the it down. Golf ball size hail yeah. in the parts of southeastern Kentucky. And you could hear it literally just beating mm. that car up Ugh. a little bit. And if you looked at close enough, you could see the leaves being stripped from the trees. That's when you know you got some big hail stuff. Yeah, it's pretty rough. It is. It's calming down, though. Good. Okay. Chris, thank you. It's called Derby Eve Lexington 2016. The party's moved downtown this year. We'll tell you more about it, how you can get tickets when we return here on WKYT. 
Rain or no rain, mm -hmm. it is an exciting time here in the bluegrass. The Derby, of course, is this Saturday, and many, many celebrations going on to ring in this huge race. Deanne Stevens is out and about today. She joins us from Manchester Street with what's happening. Hi, Deanne. Good afternoon, guys. We are here at the James Pepper Distillery located on Manchester Street in downtown Lexington. This is the place to be this weekend for Derby Eve Lexington, a big old party as we kick off Derby Week here uh, in the bluegrass. We have Ben Deaton with us, and Ben is the designer, and it's kind of hard. Like, you hear our echoes in here. There's not a lot going on yet. You guys are kicking things off tonight here, we aren't you? We're kicking off tonight. Um, we have a lot of the furniture in already, pipe and drapes going up. We have um, so many so different things many that will turn this place. On. What will this place look like? Because what we're seeing now is will be my favorite spot. Is that the dance floor? Yes. So down um, down this alleyway here, there'll be a big stage and a dance floor with uh, bars on either side, and it's going to be rocking till 2 a.m. And then you have like a VIP area too. What's that all about? This is the spot to be. This really is the spot to be. We have a full mums. GH Mum is one of our sponsors. We're giving. There's a full mum champagne bar. There's leather lounge seatings, um, different bar height seatings. It's going to be a really fun place. I cannot wait to see what you create, Ben. Donna Sturgeon with us now. She's the one that created Derby Eve Lexington. Last year was the first year. Move things downtown. Love that you guys are having it. You said, Deanna, it's just so much more convenient for folks. It is. It's downtown. It's close to hotels. It's close to Uber. It's close to taxis. You know, just. Easier to get in and out um, for a big party. And Uber happens to be a sponsor, and I love what they're doing. Tell folks. There's a code on our website, derbyevelex.com. It's an Uber code. If you buy a ticket through our website, you take that Uber code and you get a discount on your ride to and from the party. A few VIP spots still available? We've got two VIP tables left, a few VIP seats, and some general admission tickets. Go to our website, you can order them all from there. And that's, tell folks the website. WWWDerbyEveLex.com. I had you tell them because I suddenly <laughs> forgot what it was. DerbyEveLex.com, the place to get your tickets, the place to be uh, here in downtown Lexington this week for Derby Week. A lot of different charities benefiting from the party as well. So you know your money is going to a good cause as well as the opportunity to have a whole lot of fun. I'm Deanne Stevens, out and about. Back to you guys. Deanne, thank you. One of President Obama and the First Lady's daughters is embracing a popular trend among high school students. That's right. The White House says that Malia Obama will attend Harvard University in the fall of 2017 after taking what's called a gap year. Harvard encourages admitted students to defer for one year to travel, pursue a special project or an activity, work or spend time in other meaningful ways. The president says his family plans to stay in Washington for two years after his presidency ends so their youngest daughter, Sasha, can finish high school there. Souped up lawnmowers, the race car of choice in the UK. A look at this unusual race that will mow you away after weather. A lot of folks are seeing some pretty intense storms, hail, rain, a little bit of everything this afternoon. Hopefully, Chris, not a lot of damage. I know we had some damage this past weekend, right? Yeah, that was uh, from some wind damage yesterday into Keene, Jessamine County, where, by the way, we were on air showing a little twist with that thunderstorm. Right now, we've been dealing with mainly heavy rain and some large hail across southeastern Kentucky, but there, the overall severe weather threat is beginning to decrease. Still watching those creeks and streams for the rest of the region. Boy, it is just kind of an ugly day out there with temperatures on the chilly side, right around 60 degrees in most areas. 65 Frankfurt, where you've been outside of the rains for the better part of the day. Defender Radar Network showing still heavy rain across. Far southeastern Kentucky. Keep an eye on the creeks and streams. Several counties remain under flash flood warnings through the middle of the evening. Right now, let's check on traffic, see how things are moving along in Lexington. Here's Officer Don. Got a new collision. This one is at Manowar Nichols Park. It's on the inner loop of Manowar that has the right lane blocked. That's near Nicholsville Road. That's causing some issues. Harrodsburg Road delays approaching the crossover, as we would expect this afternoon, and a total of about three wrecks working in the city right now. Our drive times uh, to Nicholasville should be affected because of that crash and the issue that we have on Nicholasville Road. We're also seeing slowdowns right now uh, to Frankfurt, about 25 minutes on the interstate. Normally not too bad there. And to Georgetown, looking at 14. Now back to you in the studio. Officer Don, thank you. A home transformed into a museum and some high powered lawnmowers. It's the video that will have you talking. Take a look at this. As a hist uh, lover of history, this really intrigued me. Muhammad Ali's childhood home is now open as a museum in Louisville. It is the house where the boxing champ grew up 
with his mom and dad and siblings. The home sat abandoned until two business partners bought it and restored it. And one of them said the museum honors Ali's accomplishments, of course. He lived in this home from the late 1940s all the way into the early 60s. It is a race that's guaranteed to mow you down. The lawnmower racing season kicked off for the weekend in Great Britain. Brits can ride their John Deere tractors in cross country endurance contests. There's a Grand Prix and even a world championship. Now we checked, and there is an official lawnmower racing association right here in the U.S. So if you are interested, the closest club is in Ashland. We checked for you, so if you want to put your lawnmower in the race, there you go. I think I'll just push mine slowly yeah. right, right across the lawn. Probably the same well, bet, to right? Next of days yeah, too. it's going to be busy all on its own. All right, stick with us. We've got much more coming your way on the weather situation right now at five.